Please do be seated. Good morning. It's lovely to be with you here this morning, both in person and for the first time this year, which is exciting for me to be, be out and about, and, and also to those who are joining on, on Zoom as well. I'm the regional manager for this area for the Leprosy Mission, and I'm so thankful that over the years you've transformed the lives of so many people affected by leprosy. Some of you might recognize me. I had the pleasure of coming here last year at a similar time and also to All Saints as well. And so I'm here to say thank you so much for your faithfulness in praying and giving. Um, you're making such a difference. In this first Sunday of Lent, we've heard, haven't we, about the baptism of Jesus. We hear of the Spirit descending on him. It must have been a real high moment. But then Jesus is led into the wilderness. 40 days of temptations. It could seem like a real low to us, perhaps, after his baptism. But Jesus doesn't begin his ministry of teaching and healing until he has experienced both the Spirit equipping him at his baptism and he's shown that he can stand up to temptations, whatever the devil throws at him. Unlike Israel, who sadly wandered for 40 years in the desert, unable to show their faithfulness, Jesus shows that he is the perfect Israelite, the person who can live faithfully to his father under great temptation. And one mark of that ministry we see of Jesus was healing people with leprosy. I wonder what you think when you hear the word leprosy. We might think, is that really with us today, this ancient biblical disease that we see Jesus healing? But every two minutes, someone around the world is diagnosed with leprosy for the first time. Leprosy sadly causes nerve damage, which means that people lose the ability to feel pain. And without that gift of pain, it's easy to hurt yourself. And that's when people can sadly develop disabilities. But leprosy is curable with multi-drug therapy. It works like antibiotics. And it means that if we can find people early enough, we can stop them developing those disabilities. Sadly, people fear those with leprosy, which causes stigma and discrimination. So educating people about leprosy is so important for us too. This year, your Leprosy Sunday looks at the country of Mozambique, the eighth poorest country in the world. Healthcare can be limited. People need to travel a long way to get help medically in Mozambique. And particularly, support for people with leprosy is limited. And the disease is often misunderstood, which causes that discrimination. Okay, thanks Ian, it's going to manually move us through. <laughs> we'll go on to the next one, thanks Ian. This is Zaina here. And when people in her village realized that she had leprosy, sadly they banished her to the bush. And with her young son, who was just three, she became homeless. And then the villagers came and took her son away can you imagine how she felt? Heartbroken without food or medicine and her body and spirit became increasingly weak. But at that moment of being at rock bottom, by the grace of God, a kind stranger found Zaina. He built her a hut to shelter her and he took her to a health post where he was able to, to make sure she got that cure for her leprosy. And now, Leprosy change makers, trained by the Leprosy Mission, were able to go to her village and teach the villagers there about leprosy, how it's easily cured and we don't need to fear it. Thanks, Ian. So now Zaina has been trained herself as a leprosy change maker. She's able to recognize those early symptoms of leprosy. She's made it her mission to encourage others to do the same. Leprosy doesn't need to exist today. It exists because of a lack of medical care and ignorance. But thank you for helping to change that by partnering with leprosy changemakers like Zaina. 
At Lent, we often think, don't we, about giving something up. We look to Good Friday when Jesus gave up his life, suffering for our sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. And at Lent, we, in a sense, travel through the wilderness as we remember that there's that high point coming of Easter Sunday. Because Jesus rose from the dead, he destroyed the power of sin and death. And we can look ahead through this wilderness wandering in Lent to that great hope and future we have. What a great hope in painful times at the moment of eternal life with Christ. So thank you this Lent for partnering with us to help build community hubs. Thanks Ian. These are places where every villager is welcomed unconditionally. A place where people who can't read or write can learn about leprosy through drama, song and dance. That's so important when almost half of the population in Mozambique can't read or write. It's a way of helping them understand leprosy better. It's a place where health workers and leprosy change makers are trained to recognize early symptoms of leprosy. They learn to provide treatment and care. And it's a place from which lasting change and blessing can flow out to rural communities. Back in 2017, Dame Darcy Bussell, the famous ballerina, um, who also was a judge on Strictly Come Dancing, if any of you are fans of that, she went out to Mozambique. And before she went, she really wanted her daughters to experience something of what life was like for locals there. And she spoke to some friends who knew of the work of the leprosy mission. So she was able to visit our work and meet people with leprosy for herself. She spoke of how that changed her to see the unconditional love they had for one another. And so we're grateful that when Darcy came back, she's been willing to help us put together this short video in which she introduces this unconditional appeal in Mozambique. And you hear Zaina as well, telling her story. Let's watch this together. And I'm proud to be supporting the Leprosy Mission's unconditional appeal. I first met people living with leprosy three years ago, while I trip with my family in the It was shocking to discover so many cases of leprosy hidden away in the most rural areas. But I was struck by the love, grit, and determination of those working to find and treat people affected by it. People like Zaina, she knows from personal experience just how devastating legacy can be. Zaina was a young mother when she first noticed discolored patches on her skin. She didn't know what they were, but when neighbors recognized the sign of leprosy, they banished her to the forest and took away her three-year-old son. Thanks to the unconditional efforts of the Leprosy Mission staff, Zion was found, treated and cured. Today, she is a leader of her community, helping to find and welcome home other people affected by leprosy. Anyone who needs help comes to me, and the people who want to find me now come and participate in our meetings. We are changing people's attitudes. I am so happy. I wish I could take my heart out and show everyone how happy it is. <laughs> Diana is just one member of a large community of legacy chain makers, made up of health workers, public speakers, and volunteers, all determined to make legacy a thing of the past. And you can join them and become a legacy chain maker too by giving a gift to set this all in motion. When you become a legacy chain maker, you'll help find people affected by the disease no matter where they are, and get them the urgent medical treatment they need. In the far north of Mozambique, David, a health worker trained by the next mission, has been on the road for three hours. He's heard from local villagers about a young woman who showed early signs of leprosy. 
If you find someone with symptoms, the undertakes a further assessment, checking for patches, loss of feeling, and inflamed nerves. People often worry about what will happen to them if leprosy is confirmed. So Gabriel is ready to offer help and advice. If you have an okay, when a patient has received the diagnosis, they feel frightened, dejected, and need support. We have to prepare them because the treatment is long. We also talk to the community. We need them to a place community have where we give lectures about leprosy and stigma to reassure people. The Legacy Mission is helping communities to build hearts across this week. These are places of hope where people affected by leprosy are welcomed unconditionally. A place where they can meet without fear of stigma or rejection and receive the care and treatment they need. But a hub is much more than a place where legacy is cured. It is a beating heart of village life. A safe space where everyone is welcome, where health camps are held and where communities learn about empathy through song, dance, and drama. Please, will you help build more community hearts by giving a gift to the unconditional appeal? And if you give for the 24th of April, your donation will be doubled by the UK government at no extra cost to you, meaning your gift will change twice as many people's lives. Please join our community of legacy change makers and help make this ancient disease a thing of the past in the Middle East. Together, with your help, we will stop at nothing to prevent legacy and end the disability and prejudice it causes. That is unconditional. Thank you. Mm, we love because he first loved us. Amazing love that we, we look ahead to now in this time of Lent that we'll see so much of at the cross. I wonder if you feel that you're in the wilderness in some way at the moment. That might be physical, emotional, spiritual. Perhaps someone that you love feels that way. But I pray that this morning you'll know that amazing love that we see, that unconditional love of God for yourself. And that love leads us to love too. And one way to respond in love this Lent is through prayer. It's wonderful that we have a Heavenly Father who loves to hear us pray. And please do join me in praying for people affected by leprosy in Mozambique. For those of you in the church building, you can find prayer diaries at the back to take away with you once for the year or for, for the next three months. Or please do go onto our website, Leprosy Mission org.uk if you'd prefer to do that. For those of you joining us um, online, uh, do go onto the website to do that. Secondly, you might think, yes, I'd like to respond in love through giving a gift this Lent. That would be a, a wonderful thing. You might think, I haven't been able to go out and have coffee and a cake in lockdown. And perhaps normally I would do that. And um, perhaps you think, you know what, I can cure two people of leprosy instead. That would be fantastic. And you can do that if you're in the church building, you might like to use envelopes at the back. Um, I have a card reader as well, so you can use that outside at the end if you'd like to. And those online, you might like to go to unconditionalappeal.org.uk um, to give something. I'd love to, to hear from you. I know we can't talk properly after the service, um, but I'm sure that uh, Reverend Sally will be happy to pass on my details. Um, and of course, for those online, I appreciate I can't speak, hear, hear your voices and your stories at all this morning, um, but do get in touch with Sally and she can connect us. I'd love to, to hear from you. Thanks, Ian. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for your faithfulness, your prayers, your gifts. 
you are making such a great difference. At the back, you'll find some magazines that tell you more about that difference you've been making over the years. And I'd love for you to, to take that away. Do have a look at the table at the back. If you're on church or online, go onto our website. Let's pray, shall we? Father, thank you that you are the God of unconditional love. Thank you that as we, we wander and perhaps feel that we're, we're in a challenging time in our wilderness wanderings this Lent, thank you that Jesus, under temptation, followed you perfectly in a way we never could. And thank you that because of him who died in our place, we can look ahead to Easter Sunday, that great hope of eternal life with you. Pray, Father, that you would minister to us in our needs this Lent and help us to live in love as we love those in our community here and in your world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 May God bless you all.